Alright, in this video we're going to look at some examples related to using the squeeze and or absolute value theorem. So, in part A here we've got, we're going to find the limit of a sequence 1 over n cubed times sine of n squared. So, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this function. Kind of the problem is, though, you know, as n goes to infinity, n squared goes to infinity, but as, uh, you know, the inside uh, uh, of sine gets bigger and bigger and bigger, sine of that, that limit simply does not exist. But that doesn't mean that we can simply say, well, this limit doesn't exist. And again, what we can use in this case is, is the squeeze theorem. So sine of n squared, you know, sine of anything uh, is always between positive 1 and negative 1. Okay, so uh, we're going to try to kind of find a, a function that, that, that's smaller than 1 over n cubed sine of n squared and a function that's bigger than 1 over n cubed sine of n squared. And again, we're going to try to show that those limits um, have the same value and therefore the limit uh, that we're looking for will also have the same value. So this is kind of the first step. I think, you know, people will agree with that. Okay, sine of whatever is between negative 1 and 1. Well, again, kind of the function I want, though, I don't want just sine of n squared. I want sine of n squared times 1 over n to the third. You know, since n some positive number, if we multiply by 1 over n to the third, so all I'm doing is I'm multiplying the uh, inside by 1 over n to the third. Well, if I multiply the left side by 1 over n to the third, and the right side by 1 over n to the third, I'll now kind of get this small function and this big function. So 1 over n cubed sine of n squared is always going to be greater than or equal to negative 1 over n cubed, but it's always smaller than uh, positive 1 over n cubed. Well, likewise, if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of all of these, so now here we're using the squeeze theorem. So now we're using the squeeze theorem, and well, the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 over n cubed, that's simply going to equal 0. Likewise, the limit as n goes to infinity of positive 1 over n cubed is going to equal 0. Well, we've now shown that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n cubed sine of n squared, well, that's less than or equal to 0, it's greater than or equal to 0. So that implies that our limit, uh, our original limit, must also equal zero, again using the squeeze theorem.